Hey everybody, uh, it's Mr. MathBlog here. Sorry it took so long to get this lesson going. Been busy time of year, so most of you guys that won't make sense. But uh, uh, in 2016, it's January right now, and I'm a little bit tardy on putting this up, so I apologize. Anyways, uh, this is solving equations with exponents. So um, our variables are in the exponent position. So here's our question. How can we solve equations involving variable exponents? Okay, so here uh, we're going to solve um, uh, this variable exponent right here. See how the variable is in the exponent right there? So we're going to solve for x, and so we'll first do it with a graphing method, okay? So what we're going to do here is solve, um, uh, where does it equal 96? So one way is to first let f of x be this left side right here, and then we'll make a table. So f of x equals the 3 times 2 to the x, and we'll complete the table for f of x, okay? So here I've done the first one. So f of 1 is going to be 3 times 2 to the 1 power, and 2 to the 1 power is 2, so 3 times 2 is 6, okay? So that's where this 6 came from. So we'll make a, a graph, and we'll graph 1 comma 6, okay? So when we plug in 2, it's going to be 3 times 2 to the 2 power. So whatever x is, we plug it in for the exponent right there. And 2 squared is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, okay? 3 times 2 to the 3rd power. 2 times 2 is 4 times 1 more 2 because you got to do it 3 times 2 to the third is 8 and 3 times 8 is 24 okay can you see these are just doubling 6 times 2 is 12 12 times 2 is 24 so if we multiply 24 times 2 it should get us 48 and it does get us 48 right there when we plug in 2 to the fourth is 16 and 3 times 16 is 48 so there's the rest of them right there you guys so 96 and just keep doubling 192 and then 384 alright so it's gonna ask us now to go ahead and graph so we're gonna use that table of values and graph all these F points okay so we'll graph 1 comma 6 2 comma 12, 3 comma 24, and we'll go all the way up to 5 comma 96, okay? Because otherwise, this 384 would take us off the page, and our graph would be really small, be hard to tell. It's already going to be hard to tell right here. Now, this is going to be an exponential graph, and when we graph exponential graphs, they always do a J kind of curve that we'll find out in the next lesson. This is called exponential growth function. So exponential growth functions, where the X is in the exponent, it goes up in a J sort of curve like that, okay? All right, so recall, you guys, in section A, it said solve 3 to the 2, I'm sorry, 3 times 2 to the X, which is this pink guy right here. Where does it equal 96? Well, right there it equals 96. So the textbook uh, suggests to let's grab G of X equals 96 and complete the table for that. This is kind of silly, you guys. Well, if G of X equals 96, whoops, this should be G of X right here, you guys, right here. This should be G of X. Sorry about that. Uh, let me let me fix that right there. Okay, and that's going to say f of x on all the other slides, but just so just pretend like that says g of x right there. Okay, so um, so it's just 96 no matter what. So there's 96. So we're going to go ahead and uh, graph those, you guys. So when we graph those. Uh, we're going to use that table to graph g of x, okay? So we'll graph 1, 96, 2, 96, 3, 96. And it's going to be all these points going in this horizontal line right here. So when we connect them up right there, so now it's going to ask the graphs intersect at which point? Well, they intersect, I kind of covered it up right there, at 5, 96 right there, that point right there, okay? So that means that f of x equals g of x when x was equal to 5, okay? And they, and they equal up there when um, uh, the y coordinate was 96 right there, okay? Now we're not going to do that on most of them, you guys. We're going to solve them algebraically like this. So let's go ahead and solve this guy here. So the first thing we've got to do, just like before, we've got to isolate that x right there. So what we're going to do is get rid of this 5. So let's divide both sides by 5 right there. Okay, so when we divide by 5, we get uh, uh, 2 to the x equals 32. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. Now we're going to rewrite the right-hand side as a power of 32. Well, 32, I'm using my fingers. So 2 times 2, I've got two fingers up, is 4. And then 4 times 2 is 8. There's three fingers. And then times 2 is 16, four fingers. Times 2 is 32, is five fingers. So it equals 2 to the fifth, okay? And then so now we're going to solve, well... If 2 to a power equals 2 to a power, then this power must equal this power. So x must equal 5 right there. 
Okay. All right. So, um, uh, so we're going to go ahead and talk what's called that this book calls it the equality of base property. And it just says if we have um, uh, a B to a power equals B to another power, then these powers must equal each other. B has to be greater than zero. Okay, so it can't be zero, it has to be greater than zero, and it can't be one, because, you know, one to the seventh equals one to the twenty-seventh, so one is the exception, and so is zero. But any other number, you guys, uh, if these bases are the same, then the exponents are going to be the same. Okay, all right, so let's solve um, uh, by equating the exponents and using the equality of bases. Okay, so on this one here, let's slide it up here. We're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction. 2 over 5, it's 5 over 2. And then the 5's cancel, the 2's cancel. And, uh, and then 2 goes into 250, 125 times. 125 times this 5 is 625. Okay, 625 is the same as 5 to the 4th, so that means x equals 4. That means this when we get 5 to a power equals 5 to another power, the powers have to be equal to each other. Okay, so let's do that with this one here. So the book suggests to divide both sides by 2, but since we're dealing with this fraction over here, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. Okay, so then the 2's cancel right there, and we get uh, 5 thirds to the x equals x, and 5 thirds to the x equals 125 over 27. This is 5 to the third, this is 3 to the third, or it's 5 thirds to the third. Okay, so now we got 5 thirds to the x equals 5 thirds to the third, so x equals 3 by the equality of bases property. All right, let's try this with these guys. Okay, bell's going to ring here uh, closely, you guys, so... So here, two-thirds over here, so I'm going to do these together, you guys. We're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocals right there, okay? When we do that, we cancel out, and we get those values right here, and then we rewrite them as a power of those bases right there. So when we write them as a power of those bases, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, so this is 4 thirds squared. Here's 4 squared is 16, here's 3 squared is 9. So over here, x equals 3, over here, x equals 2. So when we get those bases equal right there. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and there's your assignment, and if you're in my class, take care.